Hello Internet! I am the Photo Hunter and I'm here to begin a new series that will not set a change in human history and alignment. For now, maybe. <laughs> the idea is simple. I will be talking about cartoons created outside the United States. There is lots of animation out there that people usually ignore because they have an awkward dubbing or strange design. But they should be seen because they shed a different light in today's cartoon world, sometimes a lot more mature than you would expect. And before you ask, no, there is no anime here. These are cartoons, pure and simple cartoon style animation. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not made in America. Being so close to Halloween, Give or take 50 feet. I decided to make this first episode about a mystery cartoon produced in Canada. It's one of my personal favorites ever, thanks to its original plot, creative character design, great storytelling, and the eerie yet inviting atmosphere it created. I am talking of the one and only Mobile Mysteries. <laughs> Here's where it gets weird. Cool, huh? As you may not know, Canada has been the second biggest creator and producer of animation in North America since the 70s. The animation studio Nelvana, for instance, helped produce classic movies and series like Rupert, The Adventures of Tintin, A Cosmic Christmas, and Clone High, among others. As the 19s came to an end, Canada began to strongly increase the production of high-quality original animation. Enter Guy Vasilovich, an enigmatic artist, animator and cartoon director from Chicago, with a fond love for the unusual, creepy and supernatural, and also one of my favorite animators ever. <coughs> Guy began his animated career as a layout artist for the Disney movies The Fox and the Hound, and the Black Cauldron. Hey, it gets better! Later, glory would shine as he became art director for the movie The Great Mouse Detective. In 1998, an opportunity for Guy to create his own original cartoon knocked in the form of Frederator's Oye cartoons, for which Guy created seven different animated shorts. Among the shorts, there was one called The Boy Who Cried Alien, that guy wrote, animated, and produced it all by himself. When suddenly, the animator suffered a fatal heart attack. <coughs> it's a shame that I couldn't find any traces of the short, but I can tell you for fact that the idea of making a full cartoon series was overlooked by Frederators, making Mobile Mysteries the first OGA cartoon not produced by Frederator and instead produced by Nelvana in the mighty one and free land of Canada. Now that we have some background, let's talk about the cartoon itself. Settle in the not-so-average town of Ouija Falls, where mysterious creatures and supernatural events are part of the scenery, you can always find the short 
chubby, sometimes creepy and always curious Mo and his friends, Hitch and Mimi, vamping over an adventure. Mobile Mysteries define itself for taking itself very serious and at the same time laughing at absurdity. The series would usually begin an episode with Mo narrating a fascinating side of society, like the host of a nature show, but he would then give it a small twist at the end of the narration that would connect to the events that would unfold into the main story. The story itself would then show a dramatic event wrapped in a piece of like experience that would make the character to which the story is themed around make an astonishing and sometimes life-changing discovery for better or worse. A curious fact about this is that although the series has a main cast, they would sometimes act as secondary characters to the main story, usually driving a related subplot or providing assistance to the main character going through the episode. On that line, the series would often have a curious way to not take itself too serious, thanks to the bizarre design of the town folks, who would usually have very unusual background stories, like a goofy looking school janitor that turns out to have been once Indiana Jones' badass grandpa, who was forced to become the guardian of the world's greatest evil that he hid underneath the school. Mo Sandstor, who turned out to be a witch hunter that hunted actual witches. Or how about paying a little homage to Monty Python and the Holy Grail? But when Mobile Mysteries wanted to do eerie, boy, they could do eerie. One of my favorite episodes must be, with no doubt, The Pet Shop of No Return. A creepy story about Emil Borneo. The kid who have lots of pets that never live long because he treats them like garbage. One day, he finds a pet store that sells rare and fantasy-like animals. Things get creepy as Mo and Mimi try to save the animals but discover that they apparently like the habitat that would kill any other kind of living being. The story ends with Emil discovering that the Chinese man that sells him the pets is actually his deceased pet frog and that the animals he sold are the same animals Emil killed only pimped up. After a strange scene, Mo, Mimi and Hitch find the store only to see it abandoned except for a single animal, a large rat in a cage that is suggested to be Emil himself. Ain't that spooky? Unfortunately, the show was barely seen outside of Canada. It never aired in the United States, and in Latin America it was shown by Fox Kids, whom only aired it close to midnight. Although that didn't stop the show from having a small, strong cult following, it didn't prevent it from vanishing after it was taken off from TV. Now, it can barely be found in a couple of DVDs or uploaded in YouTube with Spanish audio. It's really strange if you think that despite working in several shows, guy creations or episodes of series where he is credited are almost impossible to find, and that they usually are awesome. Maybe he has a curse on himself that tries to cast a shadow over his great talent. But then I guess that that is the fate of many great shows not made in America. Thanks for patronizing this pilot, and as a final note of The Strange, Mo, the main character of the series, is actually voiced by Michael Cohen, better known for Americans as Malcolm from Malcolm in the Middle. Talk about weird. <laughs>